The magic of Disney there. That was great to witness. Hey everybody, I'm Ray360, back with a fall 2021 update to the ultimate travel guide to visiting Disneyland. Now, if you've seen my earlier release from the summer, well then you know that I've shared tips and tricks and strategies for how you can maximize your time at the happiest place on earth without waiting in long lines either for food, shows, or attractions as a family. But a lot has changed over the last several months because Disneyland continues to expand its service offerings. So we revisited again to see if that strategy still holds true today. And if you haven't seen my earlier video, well, what are you waiting for? I'll put a link in the description. You can check it out because, spoiler alert, the strategy still works with some exceptions. Now, having visited during the recent Halloween time season, this kicks off the busiest time of year for Disneyland as crowd sizes have gotten out of control and wait times have gotten considerably longer. For instance, Pirates of the Caribbean, upwards of 60 minutes, that is unprecedented. So, if you're planning a trip to the park fairly soon, this is the guide for you. Watch my tips and tricks and solutions for how we were still able to effectively manage our time in the park in the most efficient way possible, including park hopping to DCA for a little boogie boogie action during the Halloween time extravaganza. Because I'm gonna share with you updates to the latest strategy for how you can maximize your time in the park and accomplish everything in a single day. And for anyone who's commented on the Disney Genie service, which is supposed to be the artificial intelligence solution that Disney's supposed to offer you to plan your day, well, what do you need artificial intelligence for when you got me, huh? Even Grogu knows. You go organic, never AI. So let me do that homework so that you don't have to. And if you haven't already, you know the drill. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe, and let's get into it. As an essential tool to help you plan your day, make sure you download the Disneyland app before your visit. Ah, it's good to be back. And here we are, back on Main Street USA once again. Now, if this is your first time to Disneyland, by all means, take it all in. The sights, the sounds, the architecture, and its whimsy, the beautifully manicured landscaping, the holiday decorations, all of it, take it all in. But if you've been here before, and have seen and done it all already, well then you know what I'm going to say. Get over to that first main attraction as soon as possible to stay ahead of the curve. After all, those crowds of first timers will be catching up to you. And before you know it, you'll be stuck in long lines rather than beating the crowds and enjoying more of the park. Now Main Street is incredibly charming and dotted with plenty of distractions from great shops and boutiques to eateries and cafes. But those adventures could certainly wait for later in the day. In fact, I always recommend late night shopping anyway, and the strip is bustling and lively. Now, some of our favorite places to eat are also found on Main Street, including our beloved Carnation Cafe, which has recently reopened after having been closed for so long. Table service restaurants like this accept reservations up to 60 days in advance, and I'd strongly encourage you to do that in the Disneyland app, since availability is limited and open spots go quickly. As crowds start coming into the park, the immediate draw is gonna be that great pumpkin and why wouldn't it be? But if you're here on a time crunch, and again, you're on the clock as soon as you enter that park, you wanna to get to that first main attraction as soon as possible. In our case, our recommendation will always be Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones never disappoints. Except this time, there was a mechanical breakdown 
the ride was extended by about 25 minutes longer than it needed to be. And this is where these things kind of happen. You just got to roll with the flow. Normally next stop right after Indy, Pirates of the Caribbean, which is usually a 10 or 15 minute standby time. Now it's 30 minutes. So we're gonna piggyback Indiana Jones with a quick trip to Splash Mountain. Look at this line. That is not 25 minutes. Pirates of the Caribbean has a reported wait time of 25 minutes. Take a look at this guys. That is not 25 minutes, my friends. When the line stretches outside of the main gates, you're looking at a 45, maybe even a 50 minute wait, which brings up the other point. You may want to cross-reference those wait times on the app with just an eyeball observation. Are you in the driver's seat this time? Yes. Yeah. Where are you taking us? I don't know. coffee when you got an 80 foot drop to wake you up in the morning. If you've watched the other video, you know what's up next after Splash Mountain, Winnie the Pooh, which usually has incredibly low wait times. Nothing like the union between Haunted Mansion and Nightmare Before Christmas to bring couples together. You ready to go on a cruise? Yep. Yeah. So I'm gonna fill you in on a little secret here. While we were waiting in line in Indiana Jones using the child swap, my wife and little Yasmin over here managed to get on Haunted Mansion when it's only a 20 minute standby time. So they ended up doing Haunted Mansion while we were on Indiana Jones. Sometimes that's just how it works. There are a couple attractions here in the park that have a markedly different experience depending on the time that you visit. Haunted Mansion is certainly one of them, but also Jungle Cruise and Matterhorn. Now I'm not saying one is better than the other, but certainly it's a different experience when you visit at night. And seeing Haunted Mansion Holiday at nightfall is a magical experience that you don't want to miss. And I'll post the link in the description so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Was the nightmare before Christmas and roll through the house? And just like that, folks, we are pretty much done with Adventureland. 
in record time, I might say. Now, the only ride that we didn't get to go on yet was Pirates of the Caribbean, which had about a 45 minute posted time, but eyeballing that line, that looked well over an hour. So we're gonna do some lunch at Carnation Cafe. I tell you, it's great to be back at Carnation Cafe after they've been closed for so long. They've just recently reopened. Menu is looking tremendous as ever. Really looking forward to digging into that fried chicken. Some good old Carnation comfort food. What do you got? You got a little baby burger. Walt's famous chili. Super solid. Got the onions, the cheese, all the makings and dressings of a great chili. Just missing the heat. On a spice level of one to 10, the chili's about a two, which is to be expected for a park like this where you have to cater to many different spice levels and tolerability. We prefer spiciness at like a 9 to 10 level though, but from a standpoint of flavor, certainly a great chili. Been dreaming about that short rib. Super tender. This combination of the braised short rib and mac and cheese is delectable. Super hearty. You're probably not going to eat for a while after this meal, I'll tell you that much. And the mac and cheese is just so velvety and creamy and such a perfect complement to the braised short rib. And the secret to the mac and cheese are the crumbled Cheez-Its on top. A little bit of texture, a lot of flavor. <laughs> and the chicken, fried chicken. Mm. Really flavorful seasoning. A little dry. Nonetheless, great fried chicken. And now is a great time since we're back on Main Street to get a photo with that great pumpkin. After such an amazing lunch, now we are off to fantasy land. Now that part of the agenda has slightly changed from our summer update. And the reason for that is pretty simple. Fireworks have since resumed. And once fireworks resume, certain attractions close approximately one hour before and one hour after the fireworks show, which is why you'd want to be on those attractions prior to the firework event.
this may sound controversial, but I've got to say it. We have collectively decided to remove Mr. Toad from our agenda. Yes, I know. I realize that's gonna be a bit of controversy with many folks, but the decision was not taken lightly. After many trips and many nights wondering, what did we just witness? We just decided the attraction just wasn't worth the time. There were elements in there that were a little bit too frightening for younger kids and way too bizarre and disjointed for us older kids. So we're getting 30 minutes back to our day, moving forward. With this comes great responsibility. Are you ready? Do you think you've trained? I will, well, wherever you guys want to stop. I think you finished your training. My young Padawan. <laughs> Churro cheers. Churro cheers. Churro cheers. As always, when your kids start acting up, because they're tired, hangry, throw a churro in their mouth. You'll thank me later. So we've just been called for our boarding group for Rise of the Resistance. So with a snap of the fingers, we go from Fantasyland to Galaxy's Edge. So again, you're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with the park layout so that you know the passages between each section in order to maximize your time and get to your next destination as quickly and efficiently as possible. And now we're magically transported from Frontierland to another galaxy. First order should never underestimate a man with a slinky on his head. I can't 
than I. It's kind of true. That's the line of Splash Mountain. And that's what we like to call staying ahead of the curve. in DCA. Here to pack in a late afternoon, early evening, getting our oogie boogie on, and then heading our way back to Disneyland in time for the fireworks spectacular and closing out the night.
everyone. Thumbs. Crowd sizes like this in the park, now you know why it's so critical to stay ahead of the curve. Otherwise you may end up spending more time in lines than making memories. And where's the magic in that? Now I hope you found this guide helpful as you plan your visit during the peak fall winter season. It's certainly something special, but nothing to be taken lightly. And thank you again for watching and don't forget to subscribe for future updates and adventures. That's it for me folks, I'm Ray360. Until next time, happy holidays.